You're listening to Dare to Transform, where we find the vision, dedication, and motivation behind inspiring stories of transformation. This is part two of episode number three, Learning to Fight and Find Your Way. I'm your host, Angela Harris, founder of Work of Heart, bringing you a Missing Link Technologies production. Picking up where we left off, here's part two of Dare to Transform with Nick Selsky. So I'm going to like, I'm going to shift gears. Shift it. So we could probably talk for like four hours and record it, but I could, don't yes. have that. You could. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about, let's talk about how having a family, because yep. you went there. So yep. how has, you know, how has having a family impacted your, you know, entre- entrepreneurial journey, your career, your work? You know what? <laughs> I mean, this is going to sound this is going to sound like an odd answer, but I don't think family has impacted my career or my work. That's fair. I mean, I'm married to an amazing woman who supports me and supports what I want to do. Um, you know, I've had as ever as as every as every entrepreneur um, knows or will know, there are ebbs and flows in your life. Right. Um, and if and if you're not married to someone who can accept the fact that there's going to be ups, but there's going to be significant lows. I mean, to, I'll be completely candid, then you're, you got a challenge, right? Yeah. I mean, ultimately yeah. in, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you don't have to have a family. You don't have to be married. No. I wanted a family very badly. And I was lucky enough to meet the woman of my dreams. Who's an incredible, my, my best friend and all that. Um, and she completely supports me and has supported me throughout my journey. Um, having a daughter, I have, I have a daughter who's almost 11. I mean, yeah. It's just fun. It's great. That's who I am. I always wanted to have a family. Yeah, it's incredible. So, I, I, I mean, I think that the having a family hasn't impacted my 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 business life. I mean, it's made my life better because that's what I've wanted. Right. Um, but because of who my wife is, especially because yeah. my eleven year, I mean, uh, kids are going to support you if you you know right. let they let them watch awesome. screen <laughs> let them watch screen eat a little sugar. They're like, ah, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. Um, right. But you know. Um, but if you if you if you have a partner in life, whether you're married or right. not, it doesn't really matter who 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 can't handle that reality of what life is like with an entrepreneur, then ultimately mm-hmm. either you have to look yourself in the mirror and change careers or you have to acknowledge the fact that your relationship is going to have a lot of challenges. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, uh, what what's what's odd and all tangent to where the conversation can go to next is it wasn't necessarily the family that's impacted my work and or my work career. And uh, but what's interesting is as I became a start as that startup that I had um, alluded to about merging fantasy and broadcast mm-hmm. um, started literally uh Eight months after founding that startup, built trying to get it built, um, I got diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Right. So literally um, decided to become a bootstrap startup entrepreneur. I had a co-founder. We're building this company from scratch. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I get hit with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, mm-hmm. And though that was, and my daughter at that point, I mean, she had, and <laughs> well, here's the family thing. And she was, I think, eight months old at the time or she it was, right, it was right. before one. So it was, or she may have just been one. It was just 2009. Yeah. So she was one. She was almost one. She was actually right, almost right. one. Yeah. Um, so it was, yeah, that was, I mean, that was a brain fuck. Right. And that right. was, that was the, I mean, the thing with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that I've learned and, and I've grown to understand is the fact that it's something I'm going to, I'm going to have to live with forever. It's right. also not necessarily the kind of terrifying like most aggressive form of cancer knock on wood right. um yeah. but you know when you're first hit with it it i mean it was a life shattering moment right i mean right. and even though i find i i you know i i i think of myself as an extraordinarily strong person that was you know that was a that was a a, a gut punch like i fainted I, mean, I have fainted a number of times in in life um yeah. and you know they're both both times i mean mm-hmm. i both times were in conjunction with with that the first time i got okay. told that it was and then i got i got i've been hit a couple times uh, or i've been hit three so times when you told- nick when you um so when you found out that it was cancer you fainted is that what you're yeah the first, yeah the first time i did and then i got mm-hmm. then the non-hodgkin's lymphoma came back five years or so after the first time I was diagnosed, and then okay. when I was told that it, that it had come back, I I did faint again. Okay. Uh, so you know, 
those are like, you know, brain That's fucking. That's crazy. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, it, 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 it is kind of crazy. But I mean, he, it's an emotional thing, right? Right. I mean, right. for me, it was literally that moment, that day, that, mm -hmm. that couple hours. And then it was like, okay, this is what I got to do, right? Right. So I'm not someone that hides in the corner and says, oh my God, oh my God. It's okay, what do I do? I mean, ultimately, right. the first time I got diagnosed with, with non Hodgkin's lymphoma, it was it was an information overload. The treatment, right. to, to be quite candid, it wasn't so bad. I had to have radiation once a day for 30 days. By the end, I was a little tired, but radiation is really, and it was in my groin area where basically I had a lump and people, yeah. doctors, because I had no other symptoms, they thought it was a hematoma. And okay. anyway, I ended up being cancer. Yeah. Um, and so I had to have radiation. So the radiation actually wasn't that bad. You know, by the yeah. end, you're kind of a little bit tired, but nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. Um, you know, the, the reality there was, for me, it was learning about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and trying to change my lifestyle to try and prevent it from coming back again. Okay. So at that point, what I did was I had read a book called The China Study, did some research, you know. Uh, the first thing for everyone out there who's ever been, whoever is scared that they may um, have an illness or that they've, don't go to Google, don't go to WebMD, <laughs> stay away from the goddamn I know, internet. right? So it's, yeah. hard, it's hard to resist that, but don't. Yeah. It's, it's, there's nothing but bad. Um, right. That can that you can there's nothing but fear that you right. can get from the internet um it's way and, too much there yeah and, and and ultimately i'm also very cognizant of the fact that the kind of the 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 western pharmaceutical business and machine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. drives a lot of our uh medical industry right, right? and so, our beliefs right 100 yeah. uh, yeah. and, and so at that but at that, that point i was kind of naive to it and then when I started really diving into food and nutrition and all that, I started, my eyes started getting open to uh, also like how the, the, the sugar lobby works and the milk lobby works and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. where it's just like, oh my God. And Nick, did you jump into that? Like, did you dive into that the first time or yeah. the second I, time you were diagnosed? Yeah. I dove into that the first time, but I, I, I to be completely candid, I, I, I dove into it kind of the wrong, the wrong way. Um, I, okay. I look back at it now and I kind of, I, I, I admittedly, I read a couple things and I, I clamped onto the first thing that okay. sounded like it had a solution, which was, I read a book called the China study. And okay. in the China study, it basically, um, uh, it inferred or it, 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 um, it reflected on a study that was conducted in China that involved, um, animal protein and okay. rats. Okay. And what the, 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 the thesis of that book was around, um, if eliminating animal protein, anything that comes from an animal from a diet could effectively okay. kill cancer. And, and so that's what I did. I, I, I went full bore there. I took all animal protein out. I became a vegan. Um, but mm -hmm. I replaced, um, I replaced animal protein with a lot of the meatless, the meatless, uh, you know, the meatless, and, you know, and, the, yeah. meat, the, v, the Eve's shit and all that stuff. And I stopped <laughs> eating refined sugar, but I okay. took that into the, or no, no, sorry. Uh, I wasn't so worried about sugar, but I went with dairy. So I started eating like a lot of the sweets that had like evaporated cane juice and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And you know, that's, that's where I went. Yeah. And um, when I got hit again, uh, I was, I was lucky enough to be introduced to a naturopath who started opening my eyes to other things. And the most important thing that she opened my eyes to was sugar. I mean, right. cancer is on sugar. Um, right. I mean, ultimately, um, uh, a cancer cell has time, 10 times the amount of insulin receptors as a normal cell. Okay. Cancer feeds on sugar, right? right. Um, and there's a lot of research and a lot of studies out there now that basically confirm that. So mm -hmm. it was after working with that naturopath the first time, um, it became pretty obvious to me that I messed up with my diet. And right. it wasn't about animal protein because it, you get a lot of good stuff from animal protein if it's clean, right? It's right. the... So I eat a lot of grass fed uh, fat is good for you. Not bad for you. Good right, high right. quality fat is, is very, very, very good for you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's grass fed and it's portion size, but it's all about sugar, right? right. So it's, it's, it's in lots of vegetables. So greens. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, people like to refer to it as kind of like a paleo diet, but ultimately you, know, you could say I eat what the cavemen eat, but right, the right. cavemen don't have what we have now, but ultimately <laughs> it, it's all about eliminating sugar from the diet and okay. exercise. Exercise is also right. extremely important 
because you're for me it's all about anti like non Hodgkin's lymphoma. I mean, it's effectively inflammation. I want to fight inflammation and I want to keep the cancer away. Right. So also processes and and it's about. And it's about reducing the types of foods that you eat that also your body converts into sugar. So right, right. Like carbs, right? So yeah, breads, yeah. potatoes. I haven't had a slice of bread in many years because um, your body converts that into sugar, right? Right. So, but exercise, if you're, you, you want your body to basically break down and convert those, the, the foods that you eat in the sugars, there's a sugar and everything, but you want that your body to break down the, you know, the fruit sugar, the whatever it is, um, as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. So if you exercise, I mean, they, they say 17 hours, but I mean, that's kind of unrealistic, but I mean, I exercise every day, right? And exercise every day. Yeah, so and talk to me about that a little bit. I mean, I know you, you went into it a little bit at work of heart. Um, that was really kind of the first time that you went in to, you know, detail about your routine and the, the, you know, your lifestyle choices, if you will. Um, but Talk to me a little bit about what your, you know, your daily routine looks like. So either morning. It evening, looks like this. You Lots drink a of lot of water. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, my routine is pretty simple. I mean, it's funny. Like I, 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 I drink green juice every day. So every morning um, and, and I, and, and I say green juice, I don't juice things because ultimately you okay. want, you want the fiber. So right. It's expensive, but get a Vitamix. Vitamix is the only thing out there that literally beats the shit out of the food you put in it because you don't <laughs> want things juiced because then yeah. you, because then you lose the fiber, right? Right. Um, so, uh, a lot of ginger, ginger is a great yeah. anti-inflammatory lemon to cut the ginger spinach, flax oil, chia. Um, then yeah. there's like green powders out there. Try and yeah. find the green powders that don't have stevia because stevia, even though it's a natural sugar, it's still sugar. It's not, it's chemical. Sugar. It's not good for you. Yeah. You can get flavored. Just like drink your, and as an example, drink your coffee black. You don't need milk and you don't need milk and sugar people. Like just drink it black. Like, God, yeah. come on. it's not that hard of a, it's not that hard of a change, especially the sugar. Right. Um, yeah. um, um, but yeah, for the green juice. So basically, yeah, spinach. And I, I, I drink that, make that every day. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass to kind of, peel and cut the ginger because i use a lot of right. ginger like palm size amount of ginger wow. um but <laughs> it's an anti-inflammatory so it's good right food. i yeah. eat the same thing for breakfast every morning just because breakfast you know it, it breakfasts are very hard because you know mm. you don't eat cereal i don't eat oatmeal i don't eat that so you know i, I make yeah. my own stuff it's almond flowers become my best friend so okay i make like almond flour pancakes which aren't very tasty but you know mm. frozen blueberries so i don't eat I, I eat berries um, and like mandarin orange or clementine oranges, but any high glycemic fruits like bananas, pineapple, melon. I don't, I don't touch that stuff. Okay. Citrus is okay. Um, yeah. So like, you know, frozen blueberries and almond flour stuff and, and uh, uh, almond butter, right? Like yeah. whatever lunches, you know, the thing is, you know, salads, soups, you know, and then the high quality proteins, like that's right. my day, but, I exercise every day, you know, typically, you know, before dinner. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of it. Right. So, so tell me, um, I mean, you're, you're saying this and you're saying it like, it's like, it's so easy and you're like, it's, you do this and you do this and this. Right. But, and I, and I like, it's I not easy. Send you. It's, it's, but, it's, yeah, it's so not this easy. Is what, this is what I want to get to. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I deal with it myself every day. Like I'm trying to make the right choices, but what would you say to someone who is just starting out and not necessarily someone with cancer, but mm -hmm. someone who is trying to take back control of their health and of their life? Because I mean, like I said, whether you have cancer or not, your, your health, your food choices, exercise, all of those things have a huge impact on your mental health and on your success, like in life, whether it's your career, your, you know, your happiness, whatever. So my question is, what would you say to someone who's just starting out? Um, I would say, don't go cold Turkey. Don't try and be yeah. too aggressive. Take it slow. Yeah. Um, it is hard, uh, super yeah. hard. And my back's up against the wall. I mean, the hardest thing for me is booze. Like I love drinking Yeah. Um, and I've been able to, to pick and choose the different types of alcohol that I drink, right. but ultimately yeah. it's still, you know, sometimes when I feel like having a drink, I have to sit back and think, hmm, okay. And I, and I, do, drink, I, and, and I yeah. do drink too much. I mean, straight up. Yeah. I mean, not too much as a human. <laughs> well, probably too much as a human, too. Uh, but that's that's the rugby player in me, I guess. Right. right. Uh, yeah. But that being said, you know, I have that. Oh, well, I got 
I got cancer. Oh yeah, I better not. Right. right? So I do have that. I mean, it, it you says, have that it sounds weird. I have that like thing. C card that I I play internally, and I also play yeah. it in the world, right? Like whenever I <laughs> we've talked like, about I'll, that. Yeah. I'll put, I'll play that card. Hey, I got it. I might as well use it, right? Right. Um, so I mean, I think the only advice that I would give to people is um, is take it slow. Don't try and cold turkey anything. Uh, moderation. It's funny. Our slogan at Mount A, my frost week, was moderation is the key. <laughs> Moderation like, is the key, right? Like yeah, start yeah. And, and, and start, you know, just scaling things back, right? Mm -hmm. You know, start eating a little bit more vegetables. Start yeah. maybe try your coffee without sugar, right. right? Instead of having, you know, two slices of bread for your sandwich, maybe try one slice open face. Yeah. You know, just start slow and 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 start and finding foods that it, you know, you experiment with things like maybe there are certain foods like quinoa. Like yeah. if you haven't had quinoa before, try it, man. It's pretty right. good, right? And there's yeah. ways that you can flavor it up or add it to things. You yeah. know, maybe instead of having you know meat five days a week, maybe have meat three days a week and have fish a couple times a week. And right. you know, maybe yes, it's expensive if you can mm -hmm. afford it. Try yeah. doing some grass fed stuff instead of the. Yeah. You know, it's more expensive straight up, but like I spend my money on food. That's, right. that's well, where and I, I, I think it's, um, I think that's important advice. I mean, I think that it's like when you're starting out, I've done, you know, I've tried doing the detoxes. I think I've like had some like pretty epic fails, <laughs> like we all have. four hours on, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, on a 21 day one. Um, but I think it's like, it's figuring out what makes sense for you. Um, but I also think it's important to have a goal in mind, like, you know, or have a, have a feeling or something that's kind of driving you. I mean, in your case, it's like you said, it's the C word and you've got that kind of back here, you know, on your, on your shoulder, if you will. Um, but I think that's the, you know, that's the key, what I see with a lot of, a lot of people. And like I said, I've been, I, I struggle with it too and try and, you know, try and fix this thing. You know, mental health is going well, but yeah. I'm not sleeping or, you know, I'm not eating right. Or I'm like, you know, trying to cut sugar and then I eat more of this thing over here. So I think you're right. Moderation is the key to this for sure. Yeah. And, and, to, and talk to other people that have done it. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, the one thing that I will say the internet is great for it's recipes, right? Like, yes. you yeah. know, and this kind of thing, like where I, where I default and say, if, if it's a health issue, yeah. do, do not go to the internet when it comes to no. diet and nutrition, there are great resources online. Yeah. Um, you know, to figure out good things to eat and thing and things like that. But yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it is not easy. I mean, I've had over 10 years of practice now. Um, right. So, you know, it, it's, it's less challenging for me. And I'm also very much a creature of habit. Right. I like doing the same things. I like things a certain way. I mean, a little OCD, I guess, but I mean, ultimately that allows me to um, be a little bit more flexible in my kind of Listen, I mean, we could, we, that, could be a whole right? other, that could be a whole other session, but, you know, one thing that I've seen consistently with, you know, high achievers, not necessarily entrepreneurs, but high achievers is reducing the number of decisions that you make in there a day, go. right? So yep. whether it's what you eat or, you know, what you wear or how your schedule looks, whatever. So, but okay. So we do need to wrap up, wrap up. Got it. Um, but I am going to ask you a couple of questions that I that I like to ask everyone. Uh, what or who has been your greatest inspiration? Man. You can say me. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow, Scrange, that you, you, you might be. Wow, that is that is a really good question. And and for your listeners, I asked you not to send me the questions because I wanted to be more fresh. Yes. This is one of those questions that ultimately I have so many inspirations in so many realms of, of, of my life that it's, it's really hard. I mean, to be, uh, yeah, you know what? It's funny. Like one of my recent inspirations, it's going to sound a little bit odd is I'm a huge music guy and I love live music. There's a, there's a, there's a musician. His name is Josh Homie. Uh, Josh Homie is the lead singer of a band named Queens of the Stone Age. Um, he was the guitarist for a band called Caius. Um, he was, which is a great band. He started Queens of the Stone Age, but now, but then he took Queens of the Stone Age and he's done like three or four different musical Eagles of Death Metal. Um, 
he was in them crooked vultures with with Dave Grohl and John Paul Jones, and he's done you know he's just done a lot of different things. So I I really in the type of person he is and and how he comes yeah. out, I, I've been inspired by him. But I mean I'm inspired by so many things. You know, yeah. there's not you know there's there's authors that have inspired me because they you know they they write it like Kurt Vonnegut used to be a big inspiration for me. I love the way that yeah. he wrote. You know, Tom Robbins was a big inspiration for me. Kevin Smith, as I alluded to years and years ago, was a, was a yes. very big inspiration for me. Um, you know, obviously I can talk about athletes, you know, right. Until, till the cows come home, like okay. Jim Abbott. I don't know if you remember Jim Abbott. He was a no. pitcher for the, he was a pitcher for back then. It was the, it was the, the California angels or the Anaheim angels. He had one arm. So he only had one arm and he had stump. So he became okay. a major league baseball player and he was able to become a pitcher and figure out how to put his glove while he was winding up. Like things like did, that. You know have always did kind see of, a documentary. Yeah. yeah. I mean, back in yeah. the 80s. Right. So that, yeah. that, that's the kind of stuff that's always inspired me. But as far as one individual goes, I mean, the easy answer is my father. Right. I mean, he's yeah. the one guy that, well, actually I should say, you know, there's a men in my entire life. I've had one like mentor in my life was my uncle, my mm -hmm. uncle. He's now a, a federal superior court judge in Quebec, but he was a great athlete. He was a great musician. He became a lawyer. And he's, you know, he's, he's just a great guy. And he's always been yeah. kind of like a, like the fulcrum of, 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 of my life. Cause I literally you know, known him my entire life. So, yeah. but yeah, I don't, there's not, there's not really one person. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, and ultimately I think successful entrepreneurs can also, they pick and choose different things from different right. people. Right. So absolutely. I love that. So you, you, you have no lack of inspiration, clearly. Yeah, or <laughs> lack of ability to keep answers. Oh, like, exactly. Good. Right. So I'm terrible, man. I love it. Okay. So um, the, only, the, uh, you, the only other question I do want to know, do you have a favorite book? I won't say what is your favorite book. Oh, I have, have a favorite, have a favorite book. book. I love I have, that. I have a favorite book, and I literally read this book every year. Um, I read a lot of books, but, but the two books that the, about, I read for fun, um, I don't read business books. I read stuff yeah. online, but my, I, I love spy books. Okay. Like I love spy books and sci-fi books. Okay. So the greatest book I've ever read. And I honestly, I will send you a copy okay. if you like sci-fi at all. It's yeah. a book called old man's war by an okay. author named John Scalzi. It is, yeah. it is, well, it's random. I have a good friend. I grew up in Los Angeles and one of my okay. best friends growing up in Los Angeles at one point was the assistant to the head of Warner brothers. Uh, okay. the studio. And one yeah. of her jobs was reading great books and getting movies made out of those books. Right. So one day she sent me an email to say, I just read this incredible book. You got to read it. And I read it. And literally, oh, I think I read it on my honeymoon. Okay. No, it wasn't my honeymoon. No, no, it wasn't my honeymoon, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, but my wife, but I got my wife to read it also. It is the best sci-fi book ever, and I won't no want to. See it. it is so much fun. It's about the future where um, it's the future where you can only join the armor army after you're 75 years old, and okay. the like intergalactic kind of you know the intergalactic the, they call it the colonial union army, and you're only 75 years old, you basically can enter the army. Okay. Um, it's just the, and I won't say anything more. It is, okay. the, and I think it is being made into a movie now, finally. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, huh. it is so, and this author, John Scalzi, I've read everything that yeah. he's written because his, he's got a really great kind of sense uh, of Love things, it. but Love old man's it. war by John Scalzi. I'm going to send you a copy yeah. of it. Amazing. Awesome. I also will say, I find it very interesting that you don't read any business books. I think that is very telling. I, I, it might, might be bad for me. To be honest, a lot of, no. Yeah. A lot of, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you got to read this, you know, Phil Knight's book and you got to read this. You got to read yep. that. I'm like, but I mean, there's, there's snippets online that you can read. And, and ultimately when I read mainly, it's like when I'm going to bed, cause I don't, right. we don't have TV in our bedroom or anything. I'd like to yeah. read to go to bed. Me either. And yep. I, I like to shut my, I need, I need to shut my brain off <laughs> at some point yeah. during the day. Yeah. Right. So. Right. That's uh, awesome. I might be a better businessman if I read some of those books, but I also talk to lots of people and they give me their advice, which usually is like, oh, I, I read this in the Phil Knight book. It's like, good. Don't have to read that book now. Ding. Yep. Oh. Ding. <laughs> but I'm sure it's like, give me the summary. <laughs> Thank you for the Well, Nick, books. this has been very entertaining as I knew that it would be. And, uh, I always love talking to you. I'm sure. Um, I feel like I'll probably have you back on the show at some point. So. Anytime considering I always yeah. like spend like 45 minutes talking about the beginning <laughs> wrap up and the important stuff. So that's like, it's all good. It's all terrible. good. You know right. what? That's, uh, we'll you know, outline it next time. <laughs> I'll be like, you have two minutes and go. <laughs>
I can do that. All good. All good. All okay. right. Thank you, Scrant. So, a, Nick, a true pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much, Nick, for joining us today and sharing your story. I'm Angela Harris, and this has been episode number three of Dare to Transform, a Missing Link Technologies podcast in collaboration with Work of Heart. Have an amazing day. We hope you dare to transform. <laughs>